How to Think Like Thomas Shelby from Peaky Blinders Part 2. Now the story and character of Thomas Shelby is by far one of the greatest of all time. And he's a character that I definitely view up there as being one of my favourites. I mean the journey of how a backstreet bookmaker in Birmingham is able to raise himself and his people into becoming one of the most powerful families in the country is definitely something that is legendary and to which also has many different lessons and teachings that you can learn from in order to increase the amount of power you have in your life. Now, even though I have covered Thomas twice before previously, I feel as if they were more breakdowns of strategies to be used in contextual and very specific situations and not really an adoption of the true mindset of Thomas Shelby. Now, even though Thomas is far from perfect, and he definitely has a lot of fundamental flaws in his character, which I may break down and cover in the future, the one thing that you can't take away from him is his absolute astronomical levels of strategic initiative, and how he uses that strategic initiative of his to continuously outmaneuver opponent after opponent, and rise to the top of the game of power. Which is why in this video, what I'm going to be breaking down are the key fundamental strategies, principles and mindset that Thomas uses that not only grants him that tremendous level of strategic initiative, but also how he is able to use and maintain that strategic initiative throughout his journey of becoming the most powerful gangster in Peaky Blinders. And exactly what you can use to increase the amount of power you have in your life and in your world of business. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn how to think like Thomas Shelby. Spoiler alert through seasons one to five. Now, right at the beginning of the Peaky Blinders story, it starts off with the characters of Thomas, Arthur, and John being spat and thrown right back into society after serving in World War One. But even though we initially get the impression that Arthur is the leader of the Peaky Blinders based on him being the eldest, it doesn't take us too long to work out who the true leader of the gang really is. You think we can take on the Chinese and Billy Kimber? Billy's got a bloody army! I think, Arthur, that's what I do. I think. So that you don't have to. Now, given the fact that Thomas is the middle brother, it does seem quite unconventional for him to be the leader of the Shelby family. But what we come to realise is that the reason for this is because of Thomas's very strong level of strategic initiative and what grants him that very strong ability of being able to think strategically comes down to him using the fourth strategy of the 50th law, which is to use calculated momentum. The Hustlers flow. Now what the hustler's flow is all about is understanding that most things in your life are not in your control. The world is full of chaos and uncontrollable events and it tends to move and bend at its own pace rather than tailoring and revolving itself around you. Your strength and resources are only ever so limited and there's no way, no matter how strong you are, that you can control the permanent state of chaos that the world exists in. But even with knowing this, what the majority of people try to do is try to aggressively take control of this chaos with their bare hands, just like a child trying to grab hold of the powerful tide of the sea. An impossible task that will leave you with nothing more but feelings of exhaustion and failure. So instead of trying to grab hold of the tide, and trying to prevent the chaotic events from happening in the world, what a much wiser and more strategic approach about going things is to channel the chaos of events into the direction you want to go. Instead of trying to grab hold of the tide, you direct the flow of the tide and chaos into your direction and favour by taking advantage of it. And by using this very powerful strategy towards situations, this is what makes Thomas that such masterful strategic strategist on a consistent basis and exactly what you can do so as well. I mean we first witnessed the use of this strategy just within the first episode of where it turns out the gang's plan for a robbery goes absolutely tits up. I had a bar in London for some motorcycles. 
I asked my men to steal me four barks with petrol engines. I'm guessing my men were drunk. They picked up the wrong fucking crate. Holy sweet baby of Mary. Inside, we found 25 Lewis machine guns, 10,000 rounds of ammunition, 50 semi-automatic rifles, 200 pistols with shells. Jesus, Tommy. Now, of course, this whole event wasn't Tommy's intention. And the chain of events caused the government to launch a citywide manhunt for the weapons and for the culprits involved, bringing a shit ton of heat down onto the Shelby's criminal enterprise. But unlike everyone else around him, who is anxious of the chaos and wants him to get rid of the guns, Thomas, however, takes advantage of the opportunity that the chaotic event had brought him. I have an alternative strategy. Have you lost your fucking mind? Have you not seen the streets? They've sent a fucking army to find these things. That's right. They've shown their hand. <laughs> if they want them back this bad, they'll have to pay. That's the way of the world. Fortune drops something valuable into your lap, you don't just dump it on the back of the cut. This is exactly what I mean by channeling the unpredictable chaos of the world into your favour. The answer is not to control the chaos, but to let go of this need for control and move with the flow of chaos that presents itself to you and analyse and exploit the opportunities it brings. You no longer see change and chaotic moments in life as something to fear, but rather as a source of excitement and opportunity. We see how that, even though this wasn't part of Tommy's plan, Thomas still exploits the opportunity that the event brought him. And once he decides on this strategy, he strategically uses the weapons as leverage and bargaining chips against Major Campbell to fuel his plans and his goals of business expansion. You will turn a blind eye to all of my gambling operations. Also, I'm planning an expansion onto the racetracks. And what do I get in return? I have what you're looking for. 25 loose machine guns, 50 carbines, 10,000 rounds of ammunition. When I've achieved what I've set out to achieve, I will let you know where to find the guns. You'll be a hero. You'll probably get a medal. I'm a fair man. It's a fair offer. Do we have a deal? You see what I mean? But what makes this situation quite ironic is that Thomas uses this exact same strategy against Major Campbell again prior to the lead up of the meeting. After Major Campbell raids a local community and discredits the Shelby name around the area, the Shelbys are on the back foot. But instead of Thomas just simply succumbing to the chaos caused by Major Campbell, he instead uses the Major's own actions against him. You don't parley when you're on the back foot. We'll strike a blow back first. By organising the burning of the King's photograph and occupying the moral high ground, Thomas is then able to strike a blow back against the Major. Even in the playing field between them, and once again, spotting an opportunity amidst all the chaos that the circumstances brought in. Write all this down. We're now we're being attacked in our own homes. These new coppers over from Belfast, breaking into our homes and interfering with our women. We don't think our king would want to see that happening. So we are lighting fires to raise the alarm. I'm an ordinary man. I want gallantry medals at the sun. I want you to write in your paper what's going on here. Go on, go. Are you starting to see what I mean? And this is the mindset of Thomas Shelby that I want you to help download and install into your mind. Instead of being that person that exhausts themselves trying to control everything, what you want to aim for is to be just like Thomas. A person who lets go of the complete desire for control and moves with the chaos that life presents him with. It's about getting yourself comfortable with the chaos and uncertainty in life and giving up the desire to control in such a direct, rigid manner. We can see how Thomas outmaneuvers around obstacles 
time and time again through the fluidity of his thoughts and inventiveness. Now this doesn't mean that you succumb to the drift of life and don't bother planning anything. What it means is that you channel the flow of events, letting the chaos add to the force of your already predetermined actions and goals, giving you unstoppable momentum. Plans fuck up all the time and nothing in life will ever go 100% your way. That's why it's so important for you to become a fluid and flexible strategist so that you're not paralyzed by fear when the inevitable chaos strikes just like Thomas. You're mostly in the war so you know the battle plans always change and get fucked up. Well, here it is. Things have changed. We fight the mere today alone. Arthur, it's good boat. You take the flanks, just like at San Marie. Sure. Curly, running Shelby man dies here today. You bury us side by side. That pub there is called the Garrison. Well, now it really is one. And it belongs to us. Right? right. Now, there are four main parts that make up the hustler's flow mindset. And the first main principle that Tommy uses is the concept of mental flow. Now, what mental flow is all about is rather than thinking of events as individuals and separate entities, a master of the hustler's flow thinks in terms of connections. Connections of what can link separate events together that can work in your favor. Now, what Thomas understands that makes his ways of thinking stand out from everyone else is that what often more than not seems like chaos to us is merely a series of events that are new and hard to figure out. And by absorbing more of these chaotic moments with an open spirit, you can glimpse a pattern, a reason why they are occurring and how you can exploit them. An example of where we can see Thomas demonstrate this mental flow is in season four, when Arthur nearly gets assassinated by Luca Changretta. Arthur's been injured, but he's all right, Paul. We need to make them believe that he's dead to everyone, but you, me, and Linda, Arthur Shelby is dead. Now, even though Arthur doesn't die from the situation, what Thomas does is take advantage of this chaotic situation and like usual, spots the opportunities that he can use from it. My brother is dead. By being inventful of coming up with the idea of faking Arthur's death, it opened up the doors for Thomas to take up many different potential avenues of deception to outmaneuver Luca Changretta. And that's the key with mental flow. It's about thinking in terms of connections and fluidity, and not so much in a rigid, structured, and predictable manner. By viewing the landscape as a whole and widening your fields of study and observation, this is what is going to allow you to find the connections that will help you unveil the opportunities that will allow you to outmaneuver your opponent. Again, we can see how Thomas combines the deception of Arthur's death with another tactic to overthrow Luca's position of power by making the detailed connections and nuances between Luca's rivals. Now you may know there are two families in Brooklyn I want to take over your monopoly on the import of liquor into New York. But if they move against you in New York, they'll start a war between the families. But if you were to die in a vendetta with some fucking bookmaker in Birmingham, I could take over your business without a war. See, all the blood relatives you brought with you from New York, they're all dead. And these men here, they work for money for the highest bidder. And now have new orders. Is that right? Hang on, what the hell? You see what having this such mental flow will allow you to do? Just like Thomas, it will grant you the ability to think around any obstacle. And it will also help you get into the minds of your opponents. But it's not just what you have to do that has to have flow, but it's also how you do things 
It's your strategies, your methods of attacking problems that must consistently be adapted to your circumstances. Now, even though Tommy definitely has some demons deep down inside of him, his overall ability to maintain cool and calm under pressure is not one to be trifled with, which is what links to the second principle of mastering the hustler's flow and adding to your power of calculated momentum, which is by having emotional flow. I mean, take here, for example, the famous negotiation scene between Alfie and Thomas, where Thomas completely outmaneuvers Alfie by deceiving him into thinking that he's planted a bomb in his warehouse. Right, see, I've had my lawyer <coughs> draw this up for us just in case. It, uh, it says that yeah, here that 100% of your business goes to me. Now watch how Thomas flows and bluffs his way through the negotiation all while staying cool, calm and calculated. Now, when I came in here, Mr. Solomons, I stopped to tell my shoe lace. It's not a fact, Ollie. And while I was doing it, I laid a hand grenade on one of your barrels. You did? Just check of the time. Carry on. All right, Ollie, I want you to go outside, yeah, and shoot that boy in the face from the good family. All right, anyone walks through that door except me. He blows the grenade. He tied his fucking lace on it to my lads. Listen, I'll give you 35%. That's your lot. 35. You see how Thomas's such calm, controlled demeanor and emotional flow gets under Alfie's skin and eventually breaks him. This is one of Thomas's strengths when it comes to any pressurized situation. And I can make a whole breakdown on just this itself. But the main concept is that human nature is human nature. And you can't just make your emotions completely disappear, nor should you try. So just like Thomas, what you want to aim for is emotional balance in most parts of your life, as this will grant you a calm, clear mind and not cloud your judgment and reasoning with emotion. The way Thomas does this tends to be in destructive ways, such as through the use of opium, chain smoking and drinking, which is what eventually takes its toll on him. But what you want to look at are constructive habits, ways of channeling your emotions through means that will benefit you, such as activities like exercising, meditating or journaling. But sometimes, even the simple act, just like how Thomas does here, of just letting out your frustration can work wonders to help you regain your emotional balance and regain back your cool and calm demeanor. Now the third principle which makes up the hustler's flow mindset is social flow. Now what this entails is understanding that there is only so much control that you can have of the people around you. And this is what makes Thomas that such good leader as even though he is the one that provides the framework of the plan based on his knowledge and expertise, he has no hesitation for the execution of the plan to be shaped by the ones that are involved in it. What this dynamic does is invites the people around him to bring their own energy and enthusiasm to the table and keeps a stronger sense of fluidity throughout the organization. We mainly see this dynamic between Arthur and Polly of how Tommy trust them to execute their roles in his plan from a place of their own understanding and their own initiative. This sense of freedom that they have, combined with their ability to maneuver with their own initiative within the organization, is what makes the Peaky Blinders so bloody powerful and is what helps that sense of fluidity in all of the organization and its members. Remember, you're not letting the people around you do exactly as they please. You still strongly set the overall plan, direction and tone of the project. But when you give people a sense of their own independence within a plan or project, they become way more motivated and way more creative, which gives the plan way more flow and force. In the long run, 
just like Thomas, you will find that your ability to gently divert people's energy in your direction gives you a wider range of control over the shape and result of your plan. I told you, Arthur. The dealers sell the cocaine. We take a course. We don't sell direct. The arms secretary's cracking down on our niece to fuck up everything else, understand? Put you down here because people are scared of you, Arthur. But if you don't straighten up, it'll be John's turn in London. No, mate. I can handle it. Straighten up, soldier. Yes, sir, Sergeant my John. And the final principle of achieving the hostler's flow is cultural flow. Now, what you don't want to be is stuck in the same position forever. Again, the whole concept of calculating momentum is to keep up and keep moving forward. And with the ultra fast pace that trends and cultures move with nowadays, you have to be on the forefront of it all. And what Thomas realizes is, is that in order for him and the Peaky Blinders to climb higher up the ladder of power and keep his organization moving forward with momentum, he couldn't just be the same old backstreet Birmingham bookmaker that he started out or be using the same tactics. That's why he makes no hesitation in making the decision to reinvent his image from being the leader of a cutthroat Peaky Blinder gang into an enterprising, ambitious CEO of Shelby Company Limited and a member of parliament. This reinvention is what puts himself, his organization and his power onto a whole new scale. And this is what you must do in order to maintain that fluidity within your life and business. You must find a way of periodically reinventing yourself. You don't wanna be that person that is stuck being the same old person for all your life and not grow at all. You are simply rediscovering that youthful attentiveness to what is happening around you and incorporating what you like into a much newer spirit. Just like Thomas, you are taking pleasure in shaping your personality and wearing a new mask. The one thing that you only have to truly fear is becoming a social and cultural relic. And that, my friend, is how to think like Thomas Shelby from Peaky Blinders. And that's how you can become a master of the hustler's flow. All strategy is, is the bridge between an idea and its realization in the world. And by keeping your strategies attuned to the moment, you can become an agent of change, gaining tremendous power in the process. By understanding that it's impossible to control the chaos of the world, this liberates your mind and ways of thinking to look for directions to channel the chaos in ways that play to your advantage. The answer is not to try to control the chaos, but to let go of the need for control and move with the flow of chaos that presents itself and analyze and exploit the opportunities that it brings. And the ways you can do this is by adopting the uses of mental flow, emotional flow, social flow, and cultural flow. And this is what will grant you the ability to see change and chaotic moments in life as nothing to fear, but rather as a source of excitement and opportunity to use to your advantage. And that's how to think like Thomas Shelby from Peaky Blinders. And that's what's going to grant you way more power in your life and in your world of business. Now, after me making a video every week for nearly 60 weeks straight, surrounding mob bosses, gangsters, and drug dealers, I figured it was about time that I give myself a bit of a break. As much as I really do love all the support and love that I get from you guys on the channel, the content that I produce, especially when it comes to the character breakdowns, isn't easy. So I did decide to take a bit of a step back and let my brain get some rest after creating many different analyses of many different powerful strategies and characters. And I will be resuming back to our normal schedule real soon. 
And also, just a quick update on the special project that I've been working on for you guys. Each and every day, I'm getting closer and closer to releasing it. But it definitely still needs some more work. But if you are interested in the strategic strategies and principles that I cover, then make sure you sign up with the link in the description to get notified of more information when I drop it. I don't want to give away too much just yet, but just know it's going to be something that will help you transform your ways of thinking from just a normal human being into a strategic mastermind. So if you are interested in learning more about that, then make sure you hit that link in the description. And if you like this video, make sure you smash that like button and leave a comment below on what your thoughts and feelings are about Thomas. Comment some of your favorite lessons and quotes from him and let me know what character breakdown would you like to see next. And if you are new to the channel, welcome to the channel and to all our loyal subscribers, we are glad you are here. We do some of the best character breakdowns on the whole of YouTube and we aim to produce at least one high quality breakdown per week. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any golden knowledge. I'll see you soon.